Welcome to video three of uh, performance testing concepts. And um, the last time I actually left, we, we actually chat about a um, couple of things that you need to take in mind before actually doing the whole thing, you know, setting certain goals and then taking it from there kind of thing. And now we kind of at the stage where we uh, uh, go to pre um, requisites of uh, performance testing and when I left you we spoke about questions to ask questions to ask before actually going into the whole you know into the whole project of testing and some of those were for instance uh, um, what is performance test scope what is in scope what is out of scope uh, user interface um, involved how many uh, concurrent users are expected for each um, like uh, for each visit on, on a certain web page, like uh, specify the peak or nominal. And, uh, you know, we spoke about what is the target system, what is the application workload, the system workload, and what is the time requirement. So we kind of spoke about that, and now we're going to move a, to a different um, thing about performance testing, and we're going to have a look at prerequisites uh, um, of testing conditions. And when we see... Um, prerequisites for testing uh, for performance testing is a, um, you know the first thing that comes in mind is that it is a stable build of a system which must be resembled uh, to the production environment as closely as possible so you know it is a a system which um, is very close to the actual thing so it's a, it's a it's like a lab um, that replicates the actual thing so the performance testing environment should be isolated from other environments such as user acceptance testing, which also in brackets is UAT or development. Otherwise, the results may not be conclusive or consistent. So one thing when you do testing is you want to make sure, um, you know, you want to stay away from uh, the original or from the development phase, right? Because if you've got something that's in a development phase or people that keep on developing, your testing will be redundant. The same with um, if you have, uh, let's say, um, you have the live, the actual live, uh, let's say, of, of a website. You want to try and avoid um, using the live as a testing environment, as a testing um, source. You kind of want your own testing environment. So when we look at prerequisites of performance testing, that's the first thing that, that jumps in um, is user acceptance testing. So, as a best practice, it is always advisable to have a separate performance testing environment resembling the uh, production environment uh, as much as possible. So, when you look at prerequisites for testing conditions or uh, performance testing, always remember that when testing, when doing any kind of testing, you want to keep it on a different uh, lab, like a, a different, um, when I say lab, I'm talking about scenario, right? You don't want that to involve with the development side, or you don't want to get um, get it to intervene with the live um, side of it, right? So the next thing then is um, is timing, right? So when we talk about timing prerequisites for timing, um, the first thing is that it is a critical. Uh, it is critical, and excuse me, it is critical to the cost performance of new systems that the performance test efforts begin in the inception of the development project and external through the development. The later a performance defect is detected, a higher cost it will, um, you know, it will result to. So when we talk about timing, it's all about cost, right? The more something is going to take to test, it's going to cost more. So um, this is true in the case of function testing. But even more so with performance testing, due to the end-to-end -end nature of its scope, it is always critical for performance testing terms to be involved as early as possible. So when we talk about a uh, performance testing term, we kind of define, okay, what is the term behind the actual testing? What is the testing involved? Now, let's, let's get an example in here, right, so that we can understand this easier. Uh, when we talk about this, a... Um, when we talk about timing, let's say, for instance, you've got a, a site that you've just developed. It's a huge site with a back end and, and so forth. Now, the important thing when we talk about prerequisites uh, timing is kind of like, okay, what will be tested and how long it will be tested. So when we talk about that, we kind of need to have an end scope where we would go, okay, this is how long the testing will take. So you kind of pre-lay out how many hours a certain module or how many hours a certain module of testing will last 
and then kind of, you know, put it down and kind of state, okay, that's how many hours will be spent. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. As a key performance requisite, uh, for example, performance test environment um, acquisition for preparation is often a lengthy time consuming process. So, uh, you know, preparation of a testing is normally a long process and it normally takes time. Um, and it takes time and, it, and when it's taking time, I mean, time is money, right? So at the end of the day, you want to kind of save time, especially with preparing um, preparation of stuff, especially when we talk about stuff, we're talking about testing and, um, and so forth. So that is, that is timing, right? And um, the next thing that we're going to have a look at is called uh, test conditions. Now, the thing about test conditions is that um, in performance testing, it is often crucial and often difficult to arrange for the test condition to be similar to expected actual use. Okay, so uh, this is, however, not entirely possible in actual practice. The reason is for the workloads of production systems have a random nature, and while the test workloads to their best mimic what will happen in the actual uh, production environment. So basically, when we talk about test conditions, we kind of talk about you know, what envi environments we can mimic, but we got to bear in mind that you can never have, you know, the actual live um, environment, right? You can have, or you can mimic uh, the environment, but you'll never actually have the full, full, full house environment. So that's one thing that you, that you uh, got to bear in mind, especially when talking about tish, test conditions. So when the next time when I speak about test conditions, that's the first thing that pops in your head, right? So, um, ew, yeah, where were we? Yeah, mimic. <laughs> it is impossible. Um, loosely compiled architecture implementation, otherwise called SOA, um, have created additional complexities with performance testing. Enterprise services assist that is share in common infrastructure or platform require the co coordinated performance testing with all consumers creating uh, production-like uh, transaction volumes load for sharing infrastructure or platform. So when, when, I, when I say that, I'm kind of mentioning like, let's say you've got a bank. A bank is launching a site, a website, and it needs um, testing conditions to, con to uh, test the conditions of, for instance, transactions that takes place um, on the actual website. For that to happen, you've got to have the right um, loosely coupled architecture implementations and you got to have the right complexity of performance testing tools, right, and enterprise services. So uh, that is definitely important. Uh, due to complexity and financial and time requirements around the activity, some org organizations now employ tools that can monitor and create production-like conditions, also referred to as noise, okay? So production-like conditions can also be referred to as noise. Remember that. In their performance testing environments, PTE, okay, performance testing environments, to understand the capacity and the resource requirements and very validate quickly attributes. So, you know, to mimic testing conditions, they have created, like I said, tools, and that's kind of one of the tools that we're going to look at. I mean, um, this tool that we're going to use uh, is going to mimic the whole structure. Do you see how two and two get together? Before we can use the tool, uh, you know, we first need to understand the tool. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what we're doing right now. So that wasn't, in essence, testing conditions. Now, the next thing I want to chat about is, um, I'm just going to put my mouse over it, is tools. I don't want to bore you guys, so you got to be, <laughs> be with me, yeah, yeah? So tools. Um, tools is a, when we talk about tools, in the diagnostic case, software engineers use the tools such as profilers to measure what is part of a device or software contributes most of the poor performance or to establish throughout levels and uh, the threshold, right? Um, for maintained um, acceptable response time. So it's kind of, we use the tools to get what we want, right? We use the tools um, to kind of situate what will happen, right? So, when we talk about tools, and we, um, that's what I just now said, is that, you know, the tools um, that gets used for this um, are, are tools uh, such as profilers and to measure, right, wh 